Hey y'all, how's it going? Um, it's an interesting week of vlogging, garden vlogging especially. Um, but it is the 51st week of 2021 garden vlogging and oh, I am not going to let anything uh, get in my way. So, let's go take a look at the garden and I will uh, tell you guys what's going on. I have COVID. Um, not only do I have COVID, but um, I was also wrestling with that dog right there yesterday and he head butted me. And so I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I am extremely swollen in the bridge of my nose. Um, and it's probably going to turn, turn colors. <laughs> he's a, uh, he's a very good boy. He just does not, uh, he just doesn't know how strong he is, huh? Yeah. Shouldn't wrestle with a dog with a big fat head, huh? Yeah. So, suffice to say, um, I have, I have felt better in my life than I do right now. Uh, that's for sure. But, life goes on. We have the garden. Um, I'll be in quarantine still here for another seven days. Um, but... For anybody who's curious, um, I am double vaccinated and I also have had my booster. Um, yeah, don't, uh, don't really want to talk about vaccines at all in the comment section. That's not, that is not why I'm making this vlog this week. Oh, I'm just, I'm just showing up even though I feel like garbage. Um, However, I do want to say I have been in awe and in complete reverence of um, my community, of my people. Um, whether it's community garden friends, my close, my close friends, my neighbors, uh, my family, my my partner and his family, everybody has been so undeniably kind um, and helpful whether it's like offering to bring food or uh, my sister has been sending me crafts <laughs> so I made a, I made this necklace and I made this uh, this bracelet and yeah so it's a uh, it's been a weird few days I'll say that much um, I most likely will not get to see my family for Christmas um, which I have spent days being upset about. Um, kind of numb to it right now. <laughs> but what matters is that they're healthy and that I'm healthy and my partner's healthy. Um, yeah, so enough of all of that. Um, I have a few things to update you on and there's just some really beautiful things happening in the garden. So let's look at those. We finally have a Mexican sunflower bloom the end of December. Pretty wild. Parsley's kicking butt. Um, and this beautiful thing is a Phyllis African Marigold. Look at how beautiful that is. I really love the way that this bloomed out. I'm excited to plant more of those. And uh, the kale bed isn't quite as big and beautiful and majestic as I wanted it to be, but certainly getting better. And uh, some of my lettuce is finally starting to head up as well. Um, my zinnias are still, are still doing it. And I'm actually trying to leave as many of them as I can for the bees. The bees have found their way back to my backyard um, and have really been enjoying all of the zinnias. Um, we have some beautiful looking butter crunch lettuce that is really nice and sweet since we've had some colder nights. Um, these micro dwarf tomatoes were given to me um, by a garden friend, um, and they've got lots of blossoms on them, so I think they will uh, really enjoy the cooler weather that we have here, or the, I'm, I'm sorry, the warmer weather that we have coming up. Um, and then this, I need to harvest soon. This is a big, beautiful head of Rouge d'Hiver Romaine that I tasted some, and it's nice and sweet. Um, the green bean bed is, is happening. The uh, the beans are, there's lots of blossoms, not as many beans as you'd expect, but. And then this sunflower 
This is a red rouge sunflower. It should be blossoming here soon. Maybe we'll get a red sunflower blossom on Christmas day. How beautiful would that be? Um, and then this is a tomato that seeded itself from the summer. It's a cherry tomato, so we've got little tomatoes there, which is pretty funny. Oh, there's one of the bees. Ooh. And then this cabbage is not heading up. <laughs> I don't know why. It was for a minute, and now it stopped. Um, and then I don't know why I'm like so just in awe of how big this green bean is, and I'm just letting it have seeds. So we're just letting that, we're letting that guy chill. So that we've lost most of the leaves, these trees, these greens are getting much better light. And you can tell just by the way that they're growing. So um, we're gonna harvest some collards and some different greens, um, probably for Christmas dinner. I have an awesome recipe that I created for honey goat cheese creamed collard greens, which might sound gross to, to some people, but it's actually really, really good if you've ever had creamed spinach. Um, the honey and the goat cheese, like the tartness of the goat cheese and the honey are super complimentary towards each other. Um, but yeah, that's what's, I mean, I can't go to the community plot right now. Thankfully, my uh, community plot friends are taking care of my plot and I am so grateful for that, to just have a community there that will watch over that for me. And then the other thing is, um, despite, despite what I said, and a few of you totally like, not like called me out, that sounds really aggressive, but a few of you totally like knew that this wouldn't stay the way. <laughs> um, I said I wasn't gonna buy any more seeds. Um, yeah, well, then I got COVID. <laughs> and then I really needed like an emotional uh, crutch, if I'm being honest. I had a very emotional reaction when I found out that I had COVID and I wasn't gonna be going home uh, for Christmas. So yeah, I had a, uh, as as one would, I had a fairly, uh, fairly strong emotional reaction to not being able to go home for Christmas. Uh, my grandparents are very, very old, so that was, you know, a big bummer. Um, but anyways, so I made some emotional purchases. <laughs> um, and then I also got some gifts from a, from a garden friend. Um, so um, I bought some Brad's Atomic Grape tomatoes. They're supposed to like give a hint of beer, which is ironic because I can't drink beer. Um, I got these white Soul Alpine strawberries. I got very curious about these uh, recently. Um, talking to somebody at work actually um, and then I bought more Paul Robeson tomatoes just because they're my free favorite and I'm a hoarder and I don't want to run out of seeds like ever <laughs> oh guys I am just <sighs> I'm struggling um, I got the black strawberry tomato these are the ones on the front of the Baker Creek catalog, so I got very suckered in, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then the rest of these are flowers, so I got some orange flame marigolds. I grew these last year, but um, my seeds didn't germinate very well, so I wanted to try them again. I got Colossus, Colossus Red Gold Bicolor Marigolds. Also, I heard somebody once on a podcast say that marigolds in the garden were uh, cheap and tacky, and I wanted to personally um, scream in their face. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, and then I got the Queen Lime, Queen Lime Orange Zinnia. I really enjoyed the Queen Lime Red Zinnias this year that I grew, um, so I thought I would try the orange variety. And then Baker Creek usually does like a free seed situation, and so I got the Uzbek Gold Carrots. So we will try those out. Um, in the fall, whenever you grow carrots. Is it COVID brain? Is it my swollen nose? No one knows. <laughs> I'm doing great, guys, don't worry. I'm doing really great. 
Um, and then I actually had a garden friend send me these seeds, so I'm just going to read them off and I'm going to put some pictures up here so you can see them. They're all really cool varieties that I've never grown um, and that I've never even tried before. Um, so the first one is Nature's Riddle. The second one is Wild Boar Solar. Um, I'm assuming these are the solar flare varieties. Um, and then the Tasmanian Chocolate Dwarf, the Fred's Tie-Dye, the Aztec Micro Dwarf, the Dwarf Purple Heart, the Dr. Weiches. I don't know if it's Weiches or Witchies. I've heard it pronounced both ways, um, and I should probably look it up. Um, the Red Snapper, which is a determinant, and the Invincible, which is a determinant. Um, and then there was also some carrot seeds as well. So I'm super excited about all of those tomatoes. I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I needed, I needed all the, I needed all the love. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty resilient person. I will say that. Uh, I've been through a lot in my life, but there's something about everything with COVID and just, like we've all been dealing with it now for so long and I don't know it's hard to describe it's really hard to describe and I really wasn't even that sick like I definitely the worst of it's over for me uh, hopefully I mean I don't think I don't think I've, I've been on the upswing now for a couple of days but um, the symptoms came on super fast and they left super fast um, so thankfully for me for that, my partner has continued to test negative, again, crossing our fingers there. Um, but we're just kind of out here doing our best and, um, you know, no matter how you feel about COVID or vaccines or whatever, being sick sucks and being sick around the holidays really sucks and not being able to see your family, um, also really sucks. But, um you know we're we've got some good food planned and um like i said my sister has sent like all of these amazingly fun like crafts and um we're gonna make the best of it and it's gonna be okay and um yeah <laughs> i just don't i've been so back and forth on if i want to vlog this week through all of this and um finally decided that I did because I owe that to myself um, I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let having COVID take away um, the promise that I made to myself to finish a vlog every week for this whole entire year so all that to say <laughs> today is Tuesday of the week of Christmas and I don't know what else I'm going to film this week. It's going to be one of those weird hodgepodge weeks. We're going to film something because I don't have anything else to do except for recover and uh, share, I guess. So uh, maybe I'll have a better attitude tomorrow. I was excited to share all the new seeds with you. I have no idea how I'm going to fit uh, all these new tomato varieties into my garden, but but I will. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Um, it is a couple days later. Um, I'm feeling better. Um, I'm still COVID positive. I had a PCR test a couple of days ago. Um, and so still locked down um, and quarantining. Uh, my partner is still testing negative, <laughs> knock on wood. Um, so that's really great and I'm feeling good enough to start doing stuff in the house again like um, like cooking dinner I made dinner last night that was very exciting um, and yeah and I think uh, I'm in a weird place today because I'm really noticing some reduced um, lung capacity which is crazy um, I took my dogs for a walk today it's probably like under a mile and it's a loop I do frequently um, and I was talking to my grandma and I was, I was, <laughs> she said, are you doing okay? Are you close to home? She goes, you sound panty. <laughs> I 
um, and it's because I was running out of breath. Um, so I'm definitely still struggling with fatigue, definitely struggling with a bit of um, reduced lung capacity, which I think will just take time to get built back up. Um, <clears throat> but pretty wild, if I do say so myself. So I was just feeling kind of sad about all that, if I'm being perfectly honest. And I think me getting my positive PCR, which I expected it to be positive, it kind of just affirmed the fact that I'm not going to be able to spend Christmas with my family. Hmm. So what are we going to do today? Um, we're going to plant some sugar snap peas. Sugar snap peas are one of my favorite things to grow. Um, I have an empty bed in my backyard that is getting sun again because all of the leaves have finally fallen off of the trees. Um, it's not super warm at the very moment. I have my, actually I have, this is one of my sweatshirts that I designed. Um, I have a sweatshirt on, um, but it's supposed to be really warm for like the next two weeks. Like we're in like the eighties right now. It's it's really wild uh, for this time of year. Usually it's not like, it's not like always like cold this time of year, but it's not ever this warm. So um, I am going to not do too much work. I'm moving pretty slow right now, if I'm being honest. Um, but I just need to get my hands in the dirt and do something because I, I really struggle as a human being with slowing down under normal circumstances. <laughs> um, Oh, and uh, I did finally end up with a black eye. <laughs> Very tiny little black eye. And that was from uh, me and my dog were wrestling and uh, he had me. So um, I do finally have a little black eye. I'm just, yeah, I just need to spend more time gardening because apparently the time I spend doing other things just gets me in trouble. <laughs> uh, let's go look at the bed and I'm going to explain to you what I'm going to do. Well, this is the bed that we're gonna tackle. It's gotten a little, it's gotten a little crazy. These are actually like little <laughs> collared green seedlings that I'm that I literally just like dumped, um, and they they tried they tried really hard to survive. Um, they they did root a little bit, but uh, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to go. And then there's some grass back here that I need to pull some zinnias this is wood ash from our fireplace that I just need to kind of work into the soil um it looks like there's some lettuce guys that somehow ended up over here and then there's also still some like okra stumps so these I was having a hard time pulling these out at the end of the summer and so I kind of just left them and uh some of them I'm clearly still having a hard time pulling out <laughs> Um, but some of these smaller ones, like I, I left so many of them. Um, and honestly, this is something that you do when you're doing no-till. You just kind of let the roots decompose and, um, and create some good organic matter. Man, I am so surprised at how hard these are to pull out. Ugh! I chopped down the plants in free in August. It's December. Good gracious. Um... Anyways, so yeah, I just got to pull some of these plants and then um, I'm going to set up a trellis system. So I'm going to use some T-posts um, and then I'm going to make them a little bit taller with some wood. And then we're going to use, this is actually my first time using trellis netting. Um, so we're going to use some trellis netting and that's going to look different. This kind of seems like a lot based on... <laughs> my current capacity of like doing things, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm trying not to feel really defeated, to be honest with you. Um, so we're gonna see how much of this garden project we can get done. Um, and then we'll see, I, uh, the actual sugar snap peas may not, may not get planted till tomorrow <laughs> uh, or this afternoon based on how this goes. Right. <laughs> okay guys. So my partner helped me 
put this all up um, because there were just you need you needed two people. If you can do that one person, I'm impressed. So um, I think we're gonna do some sugar snap peas, and then I think I might actually do something up front. So I gotta go through my seeds and see what I have that is uh, it's cold tolerant. Because while it is going to be warm, I don't know how long it's going to be warm. <laughs> This is the lovely, unpredictable Texas winter weather. Okay, not gonna lie, feeling a little out of breath. <laughs> um, but I'm really close to getting this, this done. <sighs> so, um, I have some sugar magnolia snap peas that are purple, um, and I have some just regular tender sweet sugar snap peas. Um, so these are frost tolerant. Both of these are 60 days, um, 60 to 70 days. Um, but, oh, these say that they're 18 to 22 inches. Hold on, I have another pack. So these little tender sweets, I didn't notice, but they're supposed to only be 18 to 22 inches, which means um, they don't need to be staked. So... Maybe I'll put them somewhere else. Peas are a really good way to amend beds without actually putting fertilizer down. So I'll grow these peas now um, and then I'll till them into the soil or I'll let them like decompose in the soil, kind of just like mix them up. And I'll probably let those decompose um, and then um, the bed will be prepped for my tomatoes because tomatoes love high nitrogen and that's what peas do for the soil is when you grow peas and then you kind of let them decompose in the soil they amend nitrogen so i'll figure out what i'm going to do with these <laughs> since these are the short guys but for the tall ones that are going to grow up that trellis we'll do oregon sugar pods and then we'll do sugar magnolias which are the purple ones and then for the front of the bed i thought it might be just worth tossing some seeds maybe a bit late for carrots um yeah, we'll just toss a bunch of carrots and see what happens because the thing with that bed is that oh I've got tons of kerosene I think I'm gonna do that the thing with that bed specifically is um, it's really dense like it really needs to be broken up which is why I planted, planted the okra there because um, okra just has really like aggressive uh, okra has really aggressive roots so a really good way to organically, if you don't want to till, if you want to break up some of the soil, is to plant root vegetables. Um, they're not going to be pretty root vegetables <laughs> um, because, you know, the, the soil isn't... Um, oh my god, guys, I'm having such a hard time using my brain. I'm trying really hard not to be um, really frustrated with the uh, COVID symptoms and side effects, but I my brain's not working as good and I'm just out of breath and <laughs> I'm used to being a very high functioning person. You guys know that. So, okay, uh, one train of thought, Brooke. Um, so root vegetables are good at breaking up the soil, um, but you just have to know going in that your root vegetables are not going to be pretty because um, when a carrot hits a um, like a barrier in the soil, it's going to break up and that's how you end up with forked carrots. So, um, but again, they're really good at breaking up soil. So I have these, um, this is not the best time of the year to plant carrots. <laughs> um, they might work, we'll see. Um, depending on how our weather goes. If we get like a hard, hard, hard freeze, they're done. You know what, maybe I will break up the soil just a little bit. I'm putting more work on myself. <laughs> Clearly I shouldn't be, but it's, it's all fine. It's all just fine. Okay, y'all, this is why you know till. Do you see? Do you see all those worms? Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm the happiest. So, oh, I'm out of breath. Um, when I amended these other beds, there was no earthworm activity. 
this bed's been resting since August um, and the ground feels probably like I don't need to till it to be honest um, I'm gonna keep going just to kind of break it up but this amount of life in the soil <gasps> Okay guys, we are ready to plant, which is good because I am very quickly running out of steam. The nice thing about planting sugar snap peas is the seeds are nice and big. So it's easy to just really put one down in the dirt and keep it moving. Oh my god. I don't know that I can actually talk and do this at the same time. Okay y'all, we are watered in and we're done. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I said in no way did I wanna come on here and share this, this week's journey with you um, in an effort to like scare anyone or <laughs> send a message or anything like that. Um, this is a gardening channel. This is not a place for health opinions, it's not a place for vaccine opinions, it's a place for showing how much hope the garden can bring you when times are hard and I know that there's people who are going through worse things in the world right now, I get it, um, but comparative suffering never uh, really made anyone feel better. <laughs> So it's like, yes, I understand that I don't have it as bad as a lot of people. I understand that there's people who are much worse off in so many different scenarios. Um, that doesn't really negate my experience or anybody else's um, because at the end of the day, it's just, it's just a sucky thing. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to say it. At the end of the day, it's just a really sucky thing. Um, but, you know, the garden gives us a lot of hope. Um, the garden gives us beautiful things to look at when life doesn't feel very beautiful. And um, the garden provides when we don't really feel like, you know, we're necessarily providing to the world. So, um, you guys will be seeing this on Christmas Eve. It's the day before Christmas Eve. Um, I hope you have just a beautiful, wonderful holiday. Um, I hope you feel good. I hope that um, you're dreaming of all the beautiful garden plans for the next year. And um, we have one more week of vlogging before the year of vlogging is up. And uh, I'll definitely still be making videos. I don't know how often or in what capacity. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> um, but. Thanks for uh, joining along with me this week um, in just my journey in the garden and in life. I really appreciate each and every one of you who watch and um, have a very Merry Christmas. I hope you're all happy and healthy. <sighs> my goodness. <laughs> Am I going to get through a sentence without getting winded? <laughs> who knows? Um, I'm just wishing you all the best. I'm wishing you all the most abundance and bounty and uh see you next week hopefully i'm uh hopefully i am continuing to improve and get better and yeah so thanks so much for watching happy gardening and we'll see you next time